Morris Rice, R-I-C-E, was born and raised in the lovely small town of Greenville, Tennessee. She lives there most of the year and not at her second home in Falling Waters, West Virginia. She has resided in 10 different states and four foreign countries. She is married to Barry, her husband of 50 years. They both are veterans of the United States Air Force. Being a former Christian school teacher and an ongoing volunteer interior decorator, she has many topics of interest. As many of you ladies can understand, her favorite topics of interest are her three grandchildren, Caitlin, Courtney, and Kristen. Thank you for allowing her to share some of her big horizons with us today. Let's give her a big hand. Dora <coughs> Brown. Uh, today, I would like to share a little bit about my life and where I've been and the big horizons that God has allowed me to experience in my life. Uh, as she introduced me, she told uh, that I am from Greenville, Tennessee. Uh, are any of you ladies familiar with Greenville? It's a beautiful little uh, town with a lot of history. So uh, when I mention the word horizons, uh, are there any words that come to your mind when I mention that word? Anyone? Well, to me, when I look at a beautiful horizon, the words beauty, hope, and adventure come to my mind. And that's exactly <clears throat> what has happened in my life uh, in so many, many uh, horizons. Now, <clears throat> If you'll forgive me, I'm clearing my throat a lot because I think I have an allergy. <laughs> but uh, my earliest memories <clears throat> of um, life in Greenville, I was gazing out on the beautiful mountains. And I never, ever dreamed of living anywhere else in the world because it was so beautiful and it was so wonderful. I never thought about, you know, um, even coming to Kingsport. That would have been a big, big adventure. But nestled among the mountains and natural beauty, my small hometown of Greenville, Tennessee, can boast of unique figures of history. It's the home of President Andrew Johnson, as well as Davy Crockett, king of the wild frontier. The beauty I observed reflected in the heavens found its way into my heart on multiple levels. Although I was living in a family full of love for me and I for them, I was keenly aware of an emptiness within myself. As a child, I couldn't identify that missing piece. But happily, one day, a pastor of a nearby church knocked on our door and invited us to attend. It was there in that little church as a 10-year-old uh, child, I was introduced by a Sunday school teacher to a beautiful love story. I learned the good news uh, that from the Bible, the creator of our beautiful world loved me with a deep love that transcends all human understanding. I heard how this great and wonderful God was not only the ultimate source of love, but he was also holy and perfect. And even as a child, I knew I was not perfect. And it's a dilemma that we all go through. Anyone born of man can understand that they are not perfect and that we need help. The Bible tells us that all have sinned and fall short of God's glorious standard and that the wages for that sin is death. That would be hopeless indeed if we hadn't heard the rest of the story. I learned the cherished truth that God loved me and the whole world so much that he gave his one and only son Jesus so that whosoever believes in him would not perish but have everlasting life. His perfect and sinless son, Jesus, was crucified on a cross and bled and died and was buried, but he rose again on the third day. Jesus gave his life in exchange for my wrongdoing. 
and what a gift that is. I accepted his love and forgiveness wholeheartedly. God's risen Son, Jesus Christ, became a new source of joy and beauty for me as a child. Now, I possessed a great anticipation of eternal horizon with God's Son, who knew my name, and he had a plan for my life. I wish I could tell you that from that point on, I was an amazing little girl that grew up with a bright future, but I had bumps in the road as I traveled my new path. It would be unrealistic if we thought that we would not have bumps in our road. But Jesus himself had warned us that we will have trials and tribulations, but that he has overcome the world. A few years after I put my faith and trust in Jesus, my parents divorced, leaving me as the eldest sibling. My role as a child morphed into becoming the mother figure for my younger siblings. I took the position of being a rescuer, and while this was an unhealthy role for me as a child because it made me be very lonely at times, I developed skills in my life during this period of time that has enabled me to encourage and help others as I have gone along my path. The passion that grew in me for all things beautiful was birthed in me by a, an unusual occurring event. My grandmother had oil heating in her uh, home in the winter, and it would produce a blackened smoke all over the walls and the floors as well. So every springtime, we would have to go and change the linoleum rugs on the floor and put new wallpaper on the walls every year, which seemed like very tedious to me, but it was preparing me for what God had ahead for me in my life. I continue to be the rescuer, good student, and working uh, role for my family until I was recruited into the United States Air Force. Now, the United States Air Force was a very unlikely career choice for me because I had motion sickness, I did not like heights, and I was not an adventurous person. I liked everything safe and secure. But they had a quota to fill, and as the saying goes, off we go into the wild blue yonder, rising high into the sky, and I was off to a new and much bigger horizon. This life decision brought me the man of my dreams. He, he was in Denver, Colorado training. Uh, his name is Barry, and he was there training in electronics when I arrived. We fell in love. But sometimes good old Uncle Sam does not understand love. So I was sent to Grand Forks, North Dakota, <laughs> and he was sent to Warner Robins, Georgia. So quickly we discovered that we were using a lot of our salary on, in the old days they had pay phones. Do any of you remember pay phones? <laughs> and so we decided it might be cheaper to get married than to spend our salary on pay phones <laughs> talking to each other. Although when we uh, got married, we decided that um, we better, you know, just think about getting together. And that took quite a while with him up there and me in one place and he in another. But although we were believers in Christ at the time we um, got married, we really did not dedicate our lives to the Lord at that time. We had kind of fallen by the wayside and kind of we were trusting human love. But before long, we discovered that human love is wonderful, but it's not enough. And if we were going to flourish successfully in marriage, we both realized that we had to recommit our devotion to Jesus Christ and to one another. And in November, we will have our 50th wedding anniversary. So uh, dedicating our marriage to Christ made a huge difference in a military family who had to travel and move very many times. The following years led us both to a variety of places. But after four years in the Air Force, we decided to have a family. And we decided that it would be wise for us to have one of the parents, if we have children, to be with them and to dedicate time uh, to them. So I got out of the Air Force 
And so then the formative years, when we did have children, I spent volunteering and teaching at a Christian school that they attended. We were fortunate to be able to stay 14 years in Florida, and that was a beautiful horizon. The ocean and the skies. Um, Fort Walton Beach, Florida is an absolutely beautiful place. If any of you have been there before, you understand what I mean. So my husband had to go to many posts alone, and I stayed behind and was the single parent. And many times I felt like a single mom, and I suffered a lot of bouts of loneliness, and I missed my husband. But we were confident in our relationship, number one, with God, and then we were confident in our love for each other. So God helped us through those years. And so um, my daughter and I, after uh, my husband retired, we were participants in an event known as Mission Sunday in Nashville, Tennessee. We lived uh, in Murfreesboro. So at this particular time, we began assisting evacuees and refugees and we adopted a family from Bosnia. The Bosnians were literally fleeing for their lives from that tr troubled country that it was war-torn at the time. And my heart was moved by these people. I could not have imagined my passion for people seeking refuge would combine with my love for making things beautiful in such a way that I believe God had planned all along. After raising our children in Florida, spending time in Murfreesboro, we set out then for our new home in Manassas, Virginia. My husband uh, pursued the career in the uh, Foreign Service with the United States Department of State in Washington, D.C. That was the beginning of a totally different adventure for us. Our journey carried us first to the continent of Africa. The big, vast horizon as we landed in the Johannesburg South Africa airport was indescribable, so beautiful. As beautiful as it was, as we changed to the smaller plane heading for Lusaka, Zambia, I felt the twinge of my heart aching as I realized I was now very far away from my home in America. My heart was so saddened, I felt temporarily paralyzed emotionally by it. And if it were not for the great adventures that lay ahead of me, my heart would not have been able to have borne the loss. I was fortunate that I made acquaintances with so many missionary ladies, and they were of many different denominations. Anyone that was helping someone, I would help them with their homes. Seeing my apprehension of this new place combined with my homesickness for America these ladies lovingly took me under their wings. How could I ever repay their kindness to me and their love? Fortunately, it wasn't uh, necessary for me to seek employment because my husband, he was uh, with the American Embassy and they provided our home. Uh, so I did not have to work any uh, particular job. So I decided the way I would show them uh, thank you for their kindness to me. I began working on their projects. Uh, I would start first with their homes because uh, missionary ladies are so wonderful. They give and they give, but oftentimes they never have much nice for themselves. So I decided that I would help them with their orphanages, their unwed mother's homes, their church sanctuary projects, their soup kitchens, and a variety of other needs. We had interludes of exploring new horizons in the beautiful country of Israel and on the island of Cyprus as well. Memories of those people, so hospitable, they flood my mind every day, and it's as if sometimes they're still with me from my mem in my memories. I remember a young couple who were compelled to come to Israel to help serve at a soup kitchen. They wanted so much to serve the needy there. They moved my heart, and I told them to pick out two or three colors, and I would decorate their home for them. They were getting ready to have their first uh, child, and I told them I wanted them to have a beautiful place to serve from. Anything you don't want, get rid of it. 
and or give it to someone else, but I want you to have a beautiful home to serve the needy from. So we returned the next country to the big horizon of Lesotho, Africa. Again, I learned the wonder and the joy of being able to provide things for my own home for so many people in dire need. There was much poverty there as well. Simple things such as packing a peanut butter sack lunch for a missionary and his wife traveling back and forth to the bush became a treasured memory for me. God allowed me through him to provide again and again for so many. And I'll add a funny piece of irony. Once again, my greatest joys were in a place that terrified me. Any activity in the bush was not my happy place. But God uses your willingness to serve and love those he loves, even if we are afraid of what could be lurking in the thick bushes. That life was filled with such richness and memories and experiences that have changed me forever. But after 40 years of me longing for home, the doors open for us to have a vacation home. And of all places, Greenville, Tennessee, God is so good. He gave me my heart's desire. I now sit and look over the mountain horizon and marvel at the same beautiful mountains I looked upon as a child. Much has changed, but much is still exactly the same. We don't live in a sprawling American embassy home any longer, but we do serve God in a small little house with a deck and um, a shed, which I consider my new decorating headquarters for different projects that I do. My husband is now retired and is the heavy lifter as we continue to reach out to people in need. It is our joy to make things beautiful for people as they have need. God wants beauty in all of our lives, and sometimes he uses people like me who are unimportant, but who have a desire to love his people and to bless them. God's plan for my life has brought me full circle. I've been so fortunate to have seen so many big horizons in my life. Their beauty is available to all. A poetic statement in the Bible puts it this way, the heavens declare the glory of God the skies proclaim the work of his hands. I hope my story has given you a hunger to know and accept the love and the guidance of the Creator who, who provided you with all of these beautiful horizons that we look at every day. Our perfect and loving God made a way for us to come to him, although we are damaged by sin. It's impossible to be good enough on our own to make amends for our failure to reach God's standard of holiness. No number of deeds or religious activities will measure up as payment for our sin. But I'll remind you now of what I learned as a little girl. Jesus, God's Son, paid the price with his own blood. He was raised from the death by his Father God, and now he is in heaven with God preparing a place for those who put their trust and faith in him. This is a free gift to those who will accept it as God's pardon for them. You can pray and admit that you have broken his rules and that you are a sinner in need of his forgiveness. The Bible declares this beautiful truth available to you. But God showed his love for us by sending Christ to die for us while we were still yet sinners. If you haven't asked God for his forgiveness before, please consider it today. I'm going to pray a simple prayer, and you can pray it silently if you understand your personal need and you choose to establish a relationship with the Almighty God of the universe. If everyone would bow their head, please. Jesus, I do believe you are the Son of God, and that you died on the cross to pay the penalty for my sin. I turn away from my sin and ask you to forgive me and help me to live in a way that pleases you. Thank you for your gift of eternal 
life and for the Holy Spirit who has now come to live in me. I ask this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Now, if you prayed that prayer for the first time, we are rejoicing with you and we welcome you to the family of God. And we know that the Bible teaches us that there are angels in heaven rejoicing with you as you have come to forgiveness and have accepted the Lord's love for you. So I have a little card here uh, that's on the table, and I want to go over it with you. It's a little comment card, and if you could put your name and your phone number, if um, you have some comments to put on here, we would appreciate that so we can get in touch with you or your email. But if you said that prayer for the first time, You'll notice a box at the top. It says, I just made the decision today to receive Jesus Christ as my Savior. If you will check that box and you will give this little card to me as you exit today, then we will rejoice with you. And I have a little booklet that I would like to give to you that will help you in your walk, your future horizons that you're going to experience with God. Uh, also, if you would like to learn more about this wonderful Savior, we have a box there for you. We would be glad to give you any more information about Jesus Christ. He is the one who loves you, and we would be glad to share any information with you. We also have a box um, that um, if you would like to be a member of a Bible study group, uh, Linda, do, do you have someone that's doing a Bible study right now? Okay, this, this lady in the blue, uh, she will help you with that. And if you would like to help these beautiful ladies to serve in any way, this wonderful, happy group, I was so blessed by your happiness today, um, then there is a box at the bottom for you to um, check mark. And also, any comments that you might like to... Um, Tell us about today's meeting or even my uh, speaking to you today. We would appreciate having this. You have been such a wonderful uh, group of ladies to visit. You have cheered my day. And um, I just pray that you will have a wonderful day. And thank you for the opportunity of allowing me to share my story with you. God bless you.